Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. We're coming to you live here from Dice Tower Con 2018, <laughs> bringing you all the cool board game coverage all weekend long, and we've got our first spotlight session of the weekend with the one, the only, the Kurt. Kurt from Smirk and Dagger, Smirk and Laughter, and we are joined with the game designer, Alex, and well, let's get some introductions for us. As usual, I'm Matt. I'm Julie. We're Twist Gaming. Thank you all for joining us today. So, Kurt, yes. this is part of the Smirk and Laughter line, correct? It is, yeah. So you want to talk to us about how that differs a little bit from the Smirk and Dagger that we all know and love? Yeah. So for 14 years, Smirk and Dagger has been dedicated <laughs> to just backstabby fun. Um, any type of game that you could just dig in the screws to your friends, that's that's what we, we really specialized in. But... Uh, as I now, you know, I'm growing the business. Uh, now this is the first year I'm doing it full time, and um, we we're broadening our shoulders a little bit. So I created the Smirk and Laughter imprint um, to do a bunch of games that are simply not backstabbing, because not backstabbing is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but all these games are still really based and centered in some kind of an emotional. An emotional reaction at the table. I, you know, I like to stir the emotions. I like to, to uh, connect with people and have an experience at the table. And and man, this game does that. So we're not talking about your standard heavy strategy game. I'm just managing some resources. Correct. Um, I don't do a lot of heavy euros. Probably never w will. But if you can have an experience at the table that you walk away and you you have a story to tell, you know, coming off the a table. A memorable moment. A memorable moment. All of those things and yeah. just like. I don't know. To me, that's what makes gaming really exciting. It's 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 when you get really get uh, entrenched in theme, and you you walk away with a story to tell. It also will allow people to be lulled into a false sense of security, so that they can go back to the smirk and dagger aspect. And you <laughs> don't even see it coming. That is true. That Just is throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> so tonight we're going to be showing off before there were stars. What kind of game is this actually? So and and I'm going to I'm just going to. I'm going to okay. go nuts and sing your praises. <laughs> cool. So, uh, so Alex, so yeah, Alex, Alex, and Matt did an amazing job with this game. Uh, this is the most emotionally rewarding storytelling game that I have ever seen. Uh, they pitched me this game, and just just on the first couple sentences, I was sucked in and like, oh my god, if this is anywhere near as cool as what it just sounded like. I have to find a way to do it. They had you hooked. They absolutely did. And then I sat down and I played it, and I was like, oh, one round in, I was like, it delivers on everything it promises. And 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 that's so important. And when, when you get a game um, and you set up an expectation for someone, if you can deliver on that expectation, that is the true success of a game. And, and this just, it strikes all the warm fuzzies in your heart. Um, it allows you to be uh, creative, have a great time, and appreciate everyone's creativity at the table, which is terrific. Nice. Yeah. So, Alex, can you talk a little bit about some of the difficulties or challenges that you may have faced when developing a, kind of like a, a more loosely storytelling game versus something that has a much stricter rule set to it? Yeah, um, it's funny because it actually started off as, as something pretty completely different to that. Mm. Um, the core idea has always been there, which is you're rolling this handful of dice out on the table. The pips of the dice are stars. And um, you've made this night sky. And then originally it was just a set collection game. There was a very simple, you know, kind of like roll, score sets, collect cards. Um, we tried to go in a heavier direction. It was very... Um, it was a bit, a bit like a Favor of the Pharaoh, kind of like this dice engine building sort of thing. And the game just wasn't happy there. And what we realized is as players were drafting these constellations within the framework of the other mechanics we'd set up, they started telling stories about what they were doing just naturally. And we started to realize that that was actually the most fun that we were having when we were playing this game. So nice. let's go in there, cut out all the fat, make it a much lighter experience, and just let it be what it wants to be. Yeah. And what they what they pitched me and what I fell in love with, what they, they said, listen, um, this is a storytelling game about creation myths. So how did the universe begin? How did we begin? And where is it all going to go in the end? So uh, he talked about, you know, yeah, you take these 12 dice and you just you roll them and form the night sky. 
and then you scan the heavens looking for constellations you might see that night. So there are constellation cards out here that have all these dice pips on them. So if I see a double one, I could pull the skull into my story. Uh, if I see a two, three, and six, the owl could be part of that. And every every round, you're you're pulling two cards in as keywords, key concepts, and then you're going to start telling the tale of how the universe began with those two concepts. And I was like, wow, that is a really cool idea. I wonder how it plays. It plays really cool, and we're going <laughs> to find out right <laughs> Turn, now. Turns <laughs> out. <laughs> so so the, uh, the dice rolling and then the, the drafting of these different constellations is giving you kind of the structure, the backbone of your creation myth, yeah. whereas it's all up to your wonderful mind there to uh, create the tale itself. That's true, yeah. Yeah, and you've got about a minute to tell the tale. Um, the interesting thing is, you know, sometimes you'd think rolling 12 dice, you would be able to pick any one of these cards. But very often what happens is the card that you really want to complete your tale, in this case, oh, let's, oh, there it is. I actually have it. But uh, maybe I wanted the blizzard. I, 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 oh, actually, I couldn't get the skull. I, I, I can. Anyway, sometimes you, <laughs> actually, sometimes you actually can't but get now, the card you that you, you want, <laughs> even with 12 dice. And you're just like, oh, no. And then you, know, you, can, you can either, you have to radically think about, okay, now, how am I going to change my story? How am I going to adapt? So there is a little bit of improv in there. Um, and sometimes people even like will blind draw if they don't find one that they feels that they can fit in their story. You can just take the top one off the the deck and cross your fingers and see where it goes. <laughs> so, so how does this game deal with people that may not have the best, you know, core storytelling abilities? Does that mitigate some of the issues that you might see with a more introverted bunch? Yeah, I think a lot of storytelling games um, that really shine in a super creative, super really into storytelling group kind of fall apart when those types of people want to play them because there's just so many things that are left to you as the player um, that there isn't a kind of like a framework, a hand-holding process. In this game, there's there's the freedom to be as creative you want with what you have, but at a baseline, you're still being given these very concrete things. And even people who maybe aren't into storytelling or don't have you know, the, the most... Uh, the best baseline creativity have things they can latch on to because these are the the things the items the constellations tend to be these these they're iconic, nouns as opposed to they're, they're nouns concepts. to physical things yeah, yeah. Uh, some of them are concepts but they're they're very distinct kind of like okay lightning right like I don't have to be that creative to to say like okay like lightning that's evocative what do I want lightning to strike right I can do something with that and. Um, I think that's that's one thing that I'm really happy about how this game handles it is that there's there's this on ramping this framework that you can latch onto even if you're not a storyteller by nature. And quite honestly, I've got a, a a terrific story about that because I obviously you know I evaluated the game. I played it with a whole bunch of people to really see if it was going to be niche because you know if you're not a great storyteller, can you still play? Right. Um, interestingly enough, I've I've got um, I've got family members who um, who are on the spectrum and uh, are, are not very comfortable speaking in front of people, mm -hmm. let alone like trying to improv a story. Right. So the fact that um, the, f the theme of the game interest, is, interested uh, my nephew as much as it did, he wanted to play. It's like, well, okay, that surprised me. And he played, and it, you know, he, it took him like maybe a round or two to kind of click in, yeah. and then all of a sudden, he had this amazing moment where he, he he took a whole bunch of disparate things and just he found his way and he created this cool story oh, that's and so awesome. and I, I asked him at the end of the um, at the end of the game you know I was surprised one that you wanted to play and, and two that you did great you know tell me about that process and he's like well you know I like the I, I like the theme of the game and because of the way myths are I mean we all grow up with myths and it's kind of part of who we are as humans, I guess. So yeah. we kind of understand how they're structured. Yeah. And then you've got this card that tells you, well, chapter one is like in the beginning, and chapter two is the dawn of the civilization, and then the hero, and then how it all ends. So it's like, it's all kind of there. Right. And then I was like, well, in terms of like being embarrassed, when I was in school, I, I heard this myth about Vikings and apparently some cow licked an iceberg and a god leaped forth. Or I mean, I could do at least that well. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so um, it, it was interesting his 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 take on it. And and truly, um, I've seen people who are just like you know, 
they came to the game, they're like, oh, I'm not really, uh, I don't know how comfortable I'm going to be with this storytelling game. That's not really my thing. Yeah. And they've, they've started it. And, and again, yeah, you know, round one or two, you know, you're not sure. And, you know, maybe they didn't get the, the highest score that round. Then all of a sudden, like round three, they put together concepts in a unique way. And the way the game scores, you're rewarded for really cool moments. And sometimes a cool moment at the table is you didn't see how they were going to put all this together. And all of a sudden it comes, it, it blossoms. And you're like, oh, my God, I love yeah. that. Yes, all right, I'm, I'm putting my, my four-point, you know, star in your bag as it comes around. So, um, yeah, so it, it really does. It appeals to a lot of people, even who are not competent storytellers. Yeah, and having that framework of myths at its core, like that is just such a foundationally human thing where, you know, no matter where you are or how into you might into storytelling or myths or anything you might be, you've you've heard some, right? Yeah. Like it's 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 unavoidable. Right. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, kind of the nice thing with myth myths is that they can be grounded in reality. And then there's some that are just so over the top that yeah, as you were saying, I remember reading some myths back in you know my school days where I'm just like, this is a thing people <laughs> told as a story. <laughs> people believe this. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the way the game is scored um, is totally subjective to how we are responding to the story you're telling. So it's not like a game where only the funniest responses are going to win out, right? Like you can you can have a story that is hilarious and off the rails and crazy that could score just as well as a very serious, emotional, like traditional, heartfelt myth. And, and that's they're yeah. both equally valid. So you're going to get a nice variety of stories. Yes. That's fantastic. And that's, yeah. what I, that's one of the things I love because, you know, so many of the storytelling games can kind of devolve into the funniest joke teller. Right. And, which is fun, but to me that's less a storytelling game. Um, and the other thing is that, you know, uh, many of storytelling games are, are collaborative in some way, which again yeah. is cool, but I know personally when, I, when I'm I want to tell a story. I kind of want to own the story. I don't want to have someone run it off the rails. <laughs> I want to. I want to guide it and make it. As no, cool there as I can wasn't be. a cow there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this game, you 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 control your own little world, and we're, it's like we're four different cultures, and we looked at the same night sky, got inspired Ooh, by the same ideas, yeah. and created our own unique mythos, and that is cool. That's really awesome. I, I'm excited to get into this. Yeah. Yeah. So. Unless there's anything else you want to talk about, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this game here. All right, then. Is it my job now to give you the Anne stare? You do, yeah. Of disdain and disappointment? <laughs> for my meat and potatoes comment. Mm. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they don't like it for some reason. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's get into the rules explanation of the game here. How do we go about uh, first setting up the game, and then sure. let, how, how would we play it? All right, well, um, you want me to do this, or are you going to do it? Yeah, please stick. Okay. I'll hop in. Yeah. All right. So uh, first off, just kind of like, you know, what's in front of everybody? Well, everyone has um, a, a, a kind of a, a guide card. Um, this is um, a card that actually talks about how the chapters are structured. As I said, this is all a creation myth. And as you can see in chapter one, in the beginning, those two uh, rectangles represent key cards that we're going to draft into our story. Mm -hmm. So every round you're getting two cards, and then you see down in chapter two there's another two cards, and then a plus symbol. Um, so there you have to pull down one of the concepts from chapter one and, uh, and recall it in chapter two. What this does is it really helps fuse the story together and it provides some connective tissue. So now in chapter three, you've got two new cards plus two cards from any of the previous things that you had. Then in chapter four, two more cards. And again, you're referencing three of the cards that came before. Any three of the cards. Any three. Any three it doesn't cards, really yeah. matter. As yeah. you go along, you're, you have these threads that start running through your stories. And then there's more and more callbacks through the later rounds. So that by the end of it, you've got this really rich tapestry that are all these things you created that have somehow come together to tell this complete story of your people. Yeah. Very and, cool. And these chapters, um, they're, all, they're kind of four mini stories. Um, and they, they come together to talk about the whole cosmology of your, your universe. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that said, um, there is, uh, there's out here, we can take a look here. Uh, we set the game up by, um, we've got a constellation deck here. That's a pretty beefy constellation yes, deck. Yes, there, the there are 80 different constellations, so there is a lot of content in there. Yes. Any repeats in there? Or there no, all that's all cards? unique. Oh, wow. All unique. Um, so uh, you first set out five of the constellation cards um, so everyone can see them. So here we've got the blizzard, 
the skull, the owl, lightning, and the mountain. Now what we'll do is we'll take turns rolling the dice and scanning the heavens and pulling one each, uh, always refreshing. So there's always five to choose from. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, actually, we can let's just start with that. Sounds and, good. Uh, so uh, best I'll, I'll way to learn it is I'll by playing. Yeah, I'll just right? go ahead and start here. So got the night sky. Got a lot of ones there, Kurt. Uh, I do have a lot of ones, and with all those ones, <laughs> how convenient! I so strange. will take the skull. Of course you will. Yes, I will. All right, so skull goes off, right, and the so bear comes in. Okay. Whoa. Okay, so I gotta be less aggressive there. So the bear is a two, three, and four. Two, three, four. I think I'm gonna go for the bear. The bear. Okay. Now, obviously, as you as you take these uh, cards, these are gonna be some key figures in your story or key concepts. They don't have to be like the subject, mm -hmm. um, but you're gonna use the combination of these two things to kind of like start threading an idea. So as you're looking at uh, at the various cards, you're kind of starting to think about what tale am I going to tell? And it sometimes helps to think like, what kind of culture would have this as a tale? I was trying to ground it in reality a little yeah. bit there. Let's see. That's a lot of fives and sixes there. Uh, one, two, and two, yes. Okay, so I will take the mountain. The mountain. Thank you. New card comes out, and that is the comet. Ooh, that's a nice one. Okay. But that's a hard one. That's four dice. Can't you do it? That's a lot of ones. One, Charlie. two, five, six. I one, can't. Two, no, no, uh, one, two, five, six. I can't. All right. All right. I mean, you don't have to take his word for it. <laughs> like, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, so now once we have uh, the first card, we're going to go through a second pass. Ooh, the demon. Oh, come on now. The demon skull. I see my story forming already. Can I get it now? Four, four, two, and one. I like it. <laughs> the skull and the demon. Okay. Thematic. This is a very happy society, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> it's a little smirk and dagger, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Didn't we tell you're supposed to be smirk and laughter for this one, Kurt? Oh, that's right. I forgot. Okay. So, I rolled a little off camera there, but um, what do I want for my band? Just a little. Just I got one. <laughs> you got a five. In the camera. <laughs> so, so um, house rules for this show, you can only use ones that are actually on camera. Oh, no. oh that's oh. going to be tough for you, dude. <laughs> Sad. That could be a blind draw. If there's ever a, uh, a, a thing you, you you just can't find the card that you want, you can always blind draw off the top. It's a little risky, but I'm, I'm going to do that. Just cause, are you? Yeah, why not? I love it. Here we go. I dun, dun, try dun, 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 dun. The dog. The dog. The dog and the bear. Ooh, this is going to be a fun story. Hmm. Huh. All right. Pass him over that way. And let's see if everyone else is probably <coughs> doing a much better job keeping in the camera than me. There you go. All right, so with my mountain, I will also take four, two, one. Lightning. Please. Yeah, that seems right. Thank you. And we now have the dragon. So, Julie, what was your first card? The comet. The comet. Is there one that you're going for particularly? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> She's not going to tell you. But it starts with a D. Mm -hmm. Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. So now, now that we both, ha uh, we all have two cards, mm -hmm. uh, the balance of these are actually going to be swept away. So we won't use those anymore in future rounds. Okay. So now it's going to start with uh, the player that drafted first, and I've got to actually take just <coughs> a moment, think about what story I'm going to tell, and then I'll tell my story. Now, um, what you're going to be listening for, because uh, the audience is as equally involved here, um, after everyone does chapter one and tells their story, we're going to be passing around our offering bags. Um, you'll notice they match the color of your card. So uh, as we pass those around, you're going to score everyone but yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to have a, um, a, a blue two-point bead, Okay. a three a, a yellow three-point bead mm -hmm. and a gold four-point bead. And you're going to secretly place one of those 
in other people's bags. Uh, now, what you're going to be scoring for is important. You are not going to be <coughs> necessarily scoring who is the funniest. You're not going to be scoring who is the best presenter or orator. Uh, this game is about who had the coolest moment in your in your estimation. Um, so uh, if if if, if a story connects with you, if you said, oh, I'd l that was cool, you're going to score higher on that. Um, and it doesn't even have to be the entire chapter, just something about it that really connects so with you. So does it have to be one is two, one is three, one is four, or can you do multiples of four, for example? You're putting in one star into one player's bag. Right. Oh. However, if I think that yours is worth a three and Alex's is worth a three, can I do both or do I have no. to pick? Yeah, you're going to pick. Um, so every round you've got one of each color. There, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, so essentially at, we're ranking one, two, three. That's right. Zero so points so as, as you are listening, you know, just be mindful of, wow, you know, what, what are the moments that are connecting with you? So right. is there a hard time limit here for each one of these story segments? There is not a hard time limit. Okay. Um, the, it's roughly a minute. Okay, so um, not a 20-minute dissertation no, on no. the dog and the bear. And quite honestly, <laughs> if, you, if you have a 20-second story, that's absolutely fine, so long as you got your, your thought out. Um, you can even just kind of like run a little bit over. It's just that you don't want to like pull it into two, three minutes, that kind of thing. And in fact, there is a, uh, there's a, a free app that comes with the game, which we're not going to play with here right now, but um, it is uh, simply kind of like the night sky passing um, as the 60 seconds clock down and there's chir you know crickets chirping and then all of a sudden dawn happens and you hear the birds singing and it says time to wrap up because yeah. the stars went away yeah mm -hmm. and so and it's just it's a gentle nudge to find your ending yeah Kurt did a really great job with the app I mean it really just needed to be a simple timer but it is beautiful the night sky is shifting you got these subtle audio cues to let you know when you're getting close to the end it's really nice Okay. So I'm assuming you're starting us out here, Kurt. I am going to start us because I, I was the first to draft cards. So right now I'm just going to take half a moment. To and I'm going to interrupt you again. And I'm curious, is there a uh, rule for starting player? Or is that just kind of up in the air for however the group decides to do it? That's a great question. Um, I think in a, in a game like this, um, it's really important for whoever teaches the game, the host, the owner, to set the set the tone, set the stage. So uh, so we call out the uh, the host or owner of the game to to be the first player. Oh, I love that. that yeah. that's really good. Yeah, and it helps me get over my stage fright here. Yes, <laughs> it, it 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 at least gets. I us think you're running. just nervous that I'm going to start making cricket noises at you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I incorporate the crickets into my story. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> Okay, all right, I'm ready to go. Our world had no true beginning, no true end. For life and death are a circle, bound by each other. So our tale starts with death. The demon Hooktail took the skull of our forebears from centuries ago and lifted it out of the earth and cast into it a vision of itself that filled it with life, streaming from the sockets of the skull and spread across the earth. And where it touched land, it sparked up new bits of life. Life that would eventually reject its forebear, the demon. Oh, I like that. So one. I don't know. I just, I just that made was it pretty up. good. Kurt. <laughs> 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 you may have played this game a few times. Yeah, I was going to say. You know, good. once or twice. Hmm. So give yourself a minute. You got a usa, you know. Do we want to throw the constellations up on the? Yeah. So right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So or maybe even on people the remember what you got. Yeah. yeah. So I can put that. I have the bear and the dog. Hmm. Okay. I think I've, I've got a starting point, so let's okay. see where we go with this one. So in the beginning, there was the nurturing mother bear who took care of all of the other creatures underneath her. 
Uh, she watched out for them, she gave them warmth, and she protected them from every other uh, creature within the civilizations. The dog, on the other hand, was the scavenger, the sneaky one that was going through the shadows, trying to take what is theirs and theirs alone. Hmm. They were not the team players. They only looked out for themselves. One day, the dog happened to run into the mother bear. And that was the beginning. All right, I like it. The dog was not the good guy. The dog's not the good guy. <laughs> nice. Like bold. Right. Bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what, you had you had mountain and lightning, huh? Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. So in the beginning, there was man, but all around man, it was dark and he could not move for he was trapped in stone in the earth. He beat his fist with the little room he had against the wall, but despite his best efforts and struggles, he could not break out. He had no sense of time or space. He was just lost in an abyss. Until suddenly, from the heavens came down a bolt of lightning into the mountain in which the man was trapped, splitting it in two. From the split poured forth a river, which gave rise to life in the valley below, and the man walked out from his sh uh, former shelter to take ownership of the world. Mm. That was nice. Okay, so mm. now we have got dragon and the comet. Yep. That's cool. Is it a red comet? <laughs> Don't tell my story for me. Mother of dragons. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> There was nothing. In fact, there was less than nothing, because nothing denotes something to compare. And from the less than nothing, a glimmer that grew closer and closer until it became the comet. The comet was made of a seething, writhe of dragons, more numerous to count. One of the dragons, seeing that there was less than nothing, was sad and drawn to the emptiness. She circled herself. The spikes on her back became the mountains. Her eye became the sun in the sky and from her belly erupted new life. All right. Like that. that was that was pretty <laughs> 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 That was pretty awesome. I'm not going to tip my hand or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> I had all the time to think about it while you guys were talking. Yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. sitting here. Well, and, and so first player is going to shift by the way. So it's solid. It's going to totally change. fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally fair. <laughs> um so, all right, so that was cool. That was our chapter one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, this is all scored in secret now. So we're going to pass our bags just to the left. Pass, pass down, down the end there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we've got our points here. So again, the blue ones are two, is the right yellow ones are yeah. three, and the gold ones are four. That is correct. die has been cast. All right. Okay. So now five new constellations come out and you're going to be our first. We don't get to see these until the end then. What's that? We don't no, no. Oh, that's okay. we, yeah. One fell out. I cheated. I'm sorry. Oh, my <laughs> oh no. All right. <laughs> we have a camera here and I'll lock oh, us in here. Sure do. Okay. So we have the eagle, the elephant, the eye, famine, and the father. And it is Ooh. your honor, your honor. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you rolling? In the camera. There you go. Yeah. Okay. House rules thwarted. <laughs> hmm. 
So uh, to be clear, chapter two is how our people arrived. This is the dawn of civilization now. I'm going to spend my two threes and the five there, and I'm going to pick up famine. Ooh, I like mm. it. Okay. Fire. Mm, yep, yeah, sorry. Oh. Probably should have just... Uh, no, that's cheating. No. Let him, let oh, him I lost totally that fair. one. Oh, yeah, I can't use the two off screen. <laughs> uh. Ooh, so I have no five, so no fire for me. Let's see. No eagle either. No eagle, yeah. See, that's what I'm telling you. you is, is the elephant also have a five on it? Uh, yes. Yes. Oh no. Oh. oh no. You. The only thing you could pull the is eye the or eye top deck. Or I'm the top, top deck. decking it. All right. <laughs> the the fish. fish. The fish. Okay. Interesting. Forest. Come on, Daddy needs a the parachute. Fire. <laughs> Fire. You're really setting a tone there, Kurt. You betcha. I've committed Box. now. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get the forest. Makes sense. I can see how that would fit. The ghost. <laughs> it's amazing. As the new cards come out, you start thinking, oh, what new possibilities does this now mean for my story? Absolutely. I hope he doesn't take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. That's how I felt with the fire. I, was gonna I really I wanted one. the mountain, and I was bummed, and then the dragon came out and I was like, never yeah, mind. That's cool. <laughs> 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 what ifs? All right. All I got was a rock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to take the fox. All right. Next up is the grave. Ooh, Kurt's going for that one. Oh. <laughs> it's almost too Maybe easy. Next. I don't know. The eagle. Hmm. The hammer. Whatever is Kurt going to go for? No, you know what? Uh -huh. I might surprise you here. I am going to go instead... Part of me is thinking elephant, but I think I think I'm gonna go ghost though. Ooh. And then we don't because right. So everyone's got four now, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these will clear. That's too bad because I could probably use some of those too. <laughs> All right. So um, just as a word uh, reminder, mm -hmm. um, so now chapter two again. This is the dawn of our civilization. Um, you're you've got you're gonna use the two new cards that you that you just drafted and you're going to use one or both of the concepts that you had from last turn but <coughs> you really should connect it to to at least one okay mm -hmm. and so as at the dawn of the civil civilization that's our interpretation essentially of sure yeah uh, yeah the 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 actual words as we heard even our in our first story it's okay to use in the beginning or you know at at the dawn of our our days mm -hmm. But you can change the words. Uh, it's kind of just the intent of where the story's leading. Okay. So I gotta I gotta think about this here a little bit. So just a refresher. I had my dog and my bear from last time. Mm -hmm. But then I added some famine mm -hmm. and some forest. Great. So I gotta think about this a little bit here. I think I'm okay. Okay. So the world was a lush forest, bountiful in everything that it gave to all of its inhabitants. The civilization under the mother bear flourished. However, 
As time progressed, the forest became less lush. The greenery dwindled and became more brown, more muted, less populous. There was not enough food for everyone. The mother bear could not take care of them all. Famine struck, and the civilization started to dwindle under her guidance. That is when uh, not only was her civilization the one that was affected by the famine, all of the scavengers were as well. The dog, being a scavenger, decided that the best opportunity would be to start picking off the weak of the mother bear's society. The dog slowly approached, unbeknownst to the bear, and people started disappearing, not of hunger, but of uh, unusual circumstances. Eventually, the mother bear found out the evil dog's plan, but could not stop him due to the weakened state of the famine. Unable to protect her children, she looked for someone to help. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. All right. So I had the mountain and lightning before, mm -hmm. and we're going to add in the fox and the fish. So, as the man emerged from what had been his prison, the Cave of Stone, he saw that where the river had poured forth into the valley was alive with life, fish jumping in and out of the water, more bountiful than he could possibly have imagined. For he had existed uh, in time immemorial and had not had anything to eat in that period of time. So, he, he was kind of hungry. And... <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little peckish, if you will. Uh, so he, he goes down to the river, and he leans over, and there's, just, there's so many fish, and they're just not very bright, and they're just like jumping right into his arms. So he grabs a fish, and he's about to take a big bite, when suddenly a fox springs forth from um, a patch of grass uh, hidden in the, in the underbrush nearby, and grabs the fish out of his hands, and takes off. And as it's sprinting away, the man follows, and he gives chase to this fox. And eventually the fox comes to a clearing um, that is even more fertile and lush than anything the man had seen before, and drops the fish on the ground and gives the man a knowing, meaningful eye contact. <laughs> so you can tell it's like, you know, like a smart fox, not like just a regular fox. <laughs> <laughs> Super smart fox. And then lightning, again, comes down from the sky, hits the fish, cooking it perfectly, uh, which is great. <laughs> and then the man and the fox share the fish, and then in this new, lush, fertile, cooked fish land, he decides to build civilization. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. It was a nice, like, broil. Was, was there, like, a balsamic glaze on it? <laughs> crispy. crispy you'll, have, you'll have to wait for Act 3. Oh, all, all right, right, all right, all right. Oh, nice. He's got his hook now. Mm -hmm. All right, so I had the dragon, the comet... And I've added the eye and the eagle. Mm. The dragon's eye had become the sun. And while she gave of herself to create life, her world was still a cold and dark place, uninhabitable for anyone. She had come to bring forth something out of the nothing. And once more, she reached down deep to create again. From a sliver of her nail, she created the eagle who flew up to her eye, gathering the heat and bringing it down to the rest of the world, thereby warming it enough that life sprang forth. Fire, the first tool in any civilization, was harnessed, and now man could travel the lands, but also stay protected against the wild animals that roamed. Okay. Thanks. That's a nice link right there. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah, and you can really connect it back to like the, the what what formed the civilization. Hmm. All right, let's see. Um, okay, so I had the demon and the skull, 
And I've since added fire and the ghost. All right. Where was I in my last story? <laughs> it's been a while now. Something uh, lighthearted, yeah, you know. You know, whatever. A comic romp. <laughs> like a buddy film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the demon in the skull. Yeah. One one's the uh, the veteran cop and the other one's the hot headed The ghost is just like way too old for this. <laughs> way, way. The skull was like one day away from retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Almost. <laughs> skull. <laughs> All right. So life had sprung forth on a very barren world that was birthed by a demon, a demon devoid of soul. And it was a hard life. There were torrential rains, there was heat, there were many things that were very dangerous to, to man and life. So. Man was forced into first caves and then building rudimentary shelters. But what ached in them was not so much where to live, but how to live, how to sustain themselves in a very harsh world. And then the ghost of, of, of cultures long since gone approached the leader of our people with knowledge that the demon had a seed in us all that needed to be understood and burned out. Touched by this holy flame, this idea, we could cleanse ourselves and feed, nurture our own souls and then feed it back to the demon to heal our world. And so we sought to create a culture that would do just that. Scoring round. Scoring. Oh, that's right. Scoring. Okay. So, uh, that it's down. not just for sitting and enjoying. <laughs> it kind of is, though. <laughs> kind of is. <laughs> All right. Hold on a second. I get my points here. No. Trying to be sneaky. You're ruining it. It was too late. I'd seen everything. Um, hold on a second. Yeah. I'm jamming things up. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to chapter three. Now, this is where our story kind of flourishes. We've got now our great hero that emerges and what their, what their plight and uh, fate was. So we have to tell this tale, the hand, the sun, the valley, the volcano. The anvil. Alex, you start us this time. All right. Let's see. Great hero. I'll take the hand, please. The hand. Thank you. New card. The book. as we're trying to think. I know. Yeah. And, and, and remember what we've already said yeah, yeah. to internalize. I'm just, yeah, I'm trying to think of which ones of these can I add into mine that would just make it, just, you know, go a little bit better, yeah. more over the yep. top. Um, now and now I've lost count of what I have. Okay. Yeah, you can always blind draw, too, if you don't see what you need. No, nope, I'm going to take the anvil. Yeah, you All will. right. Darn you, Julie. The bridge. This has got to be the volcano. <laughs> the candle. I'm 
to take the valley. Do I, wait, do I? Ha I don't have the. I don't have the ones for that. Oh, <laughs> you, no, you don't, don't have the. One. Don't you don't have. You have I, a I one. Have one. I have one one. I but not one one one. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to top deck it. Top deck it. All right. And <laughs> then, you want to do a drum roll? The castle. Ooh. Ooh. Solid, solid choice. Solid as a rock. <laughs> what was that? So we have our subscriber message that comes up. So when people resubscribe to our channel, yeah. uh, Chris Cluey of both Minnesota Vikings fame and uh, oh, I can't, I, Twilight of the Gods, uh, said that on our stream as Batman. So we <laughs> that is it awesome and use it as the renewal notice. <laughs> All right, let's go with That's almost two years old, Michael. yeah. Let's go with. Oh, I should have looked at what dice I had first because I do not have the right dice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna top deck it. Oh, I love it! <gasps> and it's gonna be the cave. The cave. Ooh, the cave. Yeah. Oh, man, the cave would have been perfect for a bear. I know. <laughs> it's a civilized bear. He lives in a castle. He's <laughs> <laughs> the king of bears. Yes. <laughs> Not what I was hoping for. Mm. Not what I was hoping for at all. Do it. Do the crazy risky thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the chest. The Ooh. chest. Okay. The anvil and the chest. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Oh, no. I also got locked out of the one that I wanted. For real, right? Yep. You'd think with 12 dice, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the case. Which Not one were case. you going for? I, I was looking for the sun, so let me rethink here. Mm. I wanted the book. Oh, you didn't roll a single five. No, none. Wow. Or the bridge, and I didn't have you any twos. You could get the valley either. No. Oh, uh, you could get the valley. I think. Oh. Oh, I have it. I have it. I'm worried now. <laughs> Four and a two. The book. You're gonna take a look. It's in a book. <laughs> Can I trade you for the chest? Because I got a, I got a thing. You got it? Yeah. Yeah. You want to trade? No. Okay. <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> Do I get a refresh? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The new word is the child. Ooh. Ooh. I was going to say, the child seems like kind of a gimme for the, the for hero. The and, and the castle, right? F mm -hmm. No, five and a two. I want the sun. Yeah. Oh. I like it. Is that it? We're, we're good. We're All good. Right. Awesome. All right. So we're going to remove these. And Alex, you're going to start us this time, yeah? Yes. Okay. So are you going to put all six out here? I previously had. Okay. All right. I see what you're doing. Lightning. The mountain, the fish, the fox. And now I'm incorporating the hand and the cave. So, the year was 2808. Man and fox had been living together peacefully for two and a half millennia. <laughs> <laughs> should I just stop there? I feel like I should end on a high note. <laughs> you made me snort. <laughs> There was economic anxiety in the valley. There was just not enough fish to go around. Finally, 2,808 years later, the fish supply had been exhausted from the river. And man was getting pretty lazy, and Fox realized that Fox would need to be the hero that we all needed. Mm. <laughs> so Fox saw on the horizon a cave that no one had been to before. It appeared there almost as if by magic and for story convenience. <laughs> <laughs> so the fox entered the cave, and inside there was a magical glowing light that just radiated positive energy. And as the fox stepped into it, it realized that if it was going to be the hero that the world needed, it couldn't do it with paws. It would need hands. And so it stepped into the light, and suddenly its front paws became hands. 
and this weird, opposable-thumbed fox monster <laughs> stepped back into the valley and said, I'm going to go grab some fish for you. And it disappeared <laughs> off into the distance. <laughs> to be continued. Ellipses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with his new thumbs. I'm gonna go grab some fish. <laughs> <laughs> By who's, the way, who's got two thumbs? And he's gonna go get the fish. <laughs> this, this guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! Ooh, All right, okay. so I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it through, <laughs> but I'm gonna do my best. Yeah. All right, so I had, I had these. Back to real story. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> One of he us just, has to do the funny He thing. just totally psyched me out, and I might lose it during yeah, the middle it's a of strategy. Mine. Yeah, I like it. Whew, okay, so. <sighs> when the eagle had brought fire to the lands to bring about civilization, he had done so at his own peril, creating a phoenix-like blaze as he entered the Earth's atmosphere. Unbeknownst to civilization as it had progressed, this had drawn the eye of the comet. All the dragons that had missed their sister, who now knowing where she had left them, returned to bring her back into the fold. To do this would be the end of everything. And so, a hero needed to step forth to convince the dragons to leave their home peacefully. Many a wise man tried to come up with a solution to this problem. All failed, except for one quiet blacksmith who slowly and surely began to work at his anvil to create a large box, a chest that he hoped would trap the comet. For years, without sleep, without food, he toiled away every precious metal he could find, every jewel that he could hide in it to attract the eye of the dragons until finally it was completed. And so, as the comet neared, its eye was caught by this beautiful jewel of a trap which closed around it and the world was saved. Very nice. Okay. <sighs> I held it together. That was hard. Yeah. I was actually trying really hard yeah, not it, to laugh the whole time. It is hard to follow Me that. I, I agree. <laughs> oh. All right, take your cards on back uh, there. Reminder, I had the demon fire, the skull, and the ghost. And now I've added the volcano and the book. I've got tears. That's good. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, it's okay. I've just moved. I've just moved. Sorry. I'm okay now. Okay. So, the king of the time sent forth many men many women, sometimes children, in search of the fire that would burn out the evil within us. Many climbed the great volcano, some perilously close, and all too many were lost needlessly to the fire and flame and heat of the pit of the volcano. And finally a wise man came to our village and said to the leader, you are misguided. The fire is not that which rests in a volcano or in the sky. <laughs> Sorry. The fire is that which resides in our hearts, in our deeds, and in the words of, of, of our God. Check this book and take in its knowledge and burn the, f let that knowledge of fire burn out the evil. 
And he was right. Damn. That was a good curtain. He well, thank you. Tied that in nice. quite nicely. Yeah. Put a little <coughs> bow on it. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that one. So I had the... Let's switch over to that one yeah. there. The Dog, the Bear, Famine, and the Forest. And I picked up the Castle and the Sun. So I had the Bear and the Dog... Bear was a good guy. Dog was a bad guy. Famine happened. Forest started to turn not into a forest anymore. Recap. I can't wait to see how this pulls <laughs> in. Me too. <laughs> 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 All right. As the years progressed, the bear continued to look for the hero that she needed to protect her people. The forest had now become a desert, scorching hot. The bear, with the remainder of her strength, dragged herself across the world to attempt to find this hero. One day in the distance, she spotted something. It streamed, seemed to stretch upwards for forever. As she approached, it was a castle, stone stacked upon stone as far as the eye can see, upwards, stretching directly towards the sun. Mm. Trying to get the attention of who whatever lay within, she could, for she thought that the hero might be there. She clawed at the stones for hours, days, months, years, until eventually her body couldn't take it any further. The heat from the sun and the arid environment had taken their toll. She collapsed, and when she thought that all was through, she felt a wash of coolness over her. It was darker out. When she opened her eyes, she saw that the sun had been blotted out by the hero, the person, the, the being that was inside this castle. Emerged was what would save her people from the evil dog, the hero being a slightly larger bear. <laughs> 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 this yes. new hero bear was able to protect the civilization from the evil dog for the remainder of eternity, and from there civilization could flourish. The scavengers would pick them off no longer, and with the protection, they were able to grow. Alright. Yeah. Just needed to be a little bit bigger. Just the hair. Just the hair. <laughs> This bear was just right. <laughs> 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 oh, I missed him. Uh, let's see. I completely <coughs> blanked when I oh. was just like, what is this thing that emerged? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do. I, I don't know why. Thank you. I'm in a literary way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. So, okay. So, uh, chapter four, the end of days. So, um, you know, this could be this could be happy and hopeful. This could be doom and gloom. This is what you make it. So, uh, find us. This is more a projection of like for this world. Where are we going? And. We have Clay. Oops. Clay Aiken? <laughs> if you like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can interpret this however you Ooh. wish. That's the beautiful part. Chest could have gone a lot of ways. <laughs> you just don't know. So, I'm just picturing Clay Aiken, bringer of doom. I'm wow. <laughs> totally there with I you. Am, that is awesome. Uh, we have the cloak. Clay Aiken versus a slightly larger bear. <laughs> <laughs> We'd all pay money to see it. You know you would. <laughs> Sold out in minutes. <laughs> be there, be there, be uh, there. We have be water. Be there or be bare. <laughs> <laughs> the whale. And lastly, the rainbow. Right, then. Okay. I'm, um. Yeah. Get that clay.
Um, do, 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 do. Don't think I could. Really? Mm hmm. Do you have no twos? I have no mm -hmm. twos. Again, I'm at a two deficit. The cloak. Well, if you know what you want, then you go and you find it and you get it. Okay. No? <laughs> oh, this is good. Musical, be sorry. No. Into the woods. Nope. I figured it tied in. <laughs> not not in my wheelhouse. Not even a little. <laughs> <laughs> can't get that, can't get that. Do it. What do are you dice deficient on, Kurt? Everything. Ooh. Do you can do the it. whale. Huh? You have the whale, right? And oh clay. Whale. The whale doesn't fit in my hoe. How yeah. about Clay Aiken? Does Clay Aiken enough. fit in your <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he does, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just not, uh, feeling, yeah, it, just not feeling it, dog. Do it. Oh. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Gas. Poison. Poison. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's coming up, Kurt. <laughs> get the whale. Can't get water. I know what I'm going to get. Yeah. I'm going to grab clay. Oh, yeah, yeah. There it is. <laughs> yep. I'm so excited for that. <laughs> the mouth. All right. I just realized we missed an opportunity to have one of these be the smirk and another be the dagger. Oh. <laughs> Expansion. Ton <laughs> promo. Can I do it? No, I can't. Really wanted that ocean, but I will settle for water. The shield. The shield. <coughs> um, I mean, I'm going to roll, but I already know I don't like any of these, and I'm just going to do this. <laughs> the river. Okay, there we go. Debating on how ridiculous I want to get with mine. <laughs> My one out. And it's not here. Well, I could pick up the shield. <laughs> but I'm not going to. I what I'm going to do is pick up the ocean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the road. Was that a hate draft? <laughs> yeah. All that, right. that was some spite right there. That was. No. I didn't roll a four. I know, right? No. How many times are we now saying, like, you know, 12 dice, but <laughs> oh, well, I can't get the card I want. I'm so upset I didn't roll a four. I'm going to get creative. I'm gonna top deck it. Yeah. Dun 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 The Rose. Ooh, ooh. Ah, that's interesting. Interesting thing about top decking is it's just like all of a sudden you have this new concept and you're like Okay, let's go, brain. Got to yeah. <laughs> Som And sometimes that really works. Yeah. Though. Sometimes right. that's the best story part. No ones or twos. All right. Let's see. Oh, please tell me I can do that. Yes, the whale. Okay. I have plans. <laughs> I got plans within plans. Okay. All right. So. <coughs> All right, so at the end of days. All right. 
Centuries had come and gone. Civiliz civilizations had rose and fallen. Man had forgotten his origins. Over that time, the chest, the trap, that held the Comet of Dragons had gone from a place of prominence to a place of secrecy and guarded to being long forgotten. In that time, the dragon had grown old and weary and tired of this world she had created, who had forgotten where they had come from who had forgotten who she was, who cared for her not at all, who did not feed that loneliness that had drawn her to this place in the first place to create this world. She cried and cried. Her tears blotted out the sun from her eye and created a mighty river that washed away everything, that brought forth the chest that has now been buried deep. It burst open and the comet flew free, cloaking the world in darkness and bringing her back home. Kurt had the demon, fire, the skull, the ghost, the book, the volcano. Now he's going to tie in the ocean and the poison. <coughs> the word of light spread throughout the continent like waves on the ocean. And the very echo of the words in the demon's ear was like a poison. It, re it pulled itself back, it recoiled. But finally, through, th through the course of time, century upon century, as we move forward, all our deaths, lead to the release of all our souls, all of our light, that as it ascends and is absorbed back into the demon, makes it more and more whole, our universe becoming united once again. And then, once it's in its perfect form, it will tighten together, and then once rise, bursting again with a demon and a skull, and creating all anew. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I had, if you could help me fan those out a little yeah. bit. Dog, the bear, famine, forest. Castle, sun. Castle, sun. And I'm adding clay and the rose here. So... As the years went on, after the epic battle of the dog and the slightly larger bear, the grounds eroded, the oceans rose, the forests became inundated with water. Slowly, over the years, over the millennia, the entire world became clay, capable of sustaining no more life. Once the last of the surviving creatures perished from the world, there was nothing. There was nothing but clay. Years passed. Nothing happened. Uneventfulness. Eventually, there was green. A small sprout coming out from the center of the earth. It began to rise and take shape. A bulb formed at the top until one day it burst forth into a white rose, hmm. the beginnings of the forest of the next civilization. Very good. I like it. All right.
right, so I had lightning, the mountain, the fish, the fox, the cave, and the hand. And now I'll be working in water and the whale. So, Foxy McThumbs, out on his adventure. <laughs> I workshopped that a lot in my yeah. head over the last yeah, few yeah, minutes. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, that was the worst option, but I went with it. Uh... <laughs> Foxy McThumbs, Foxy as he was known to sure. his friends, uh, <laughs> thumbs to his enemies, <laughs> set out <laughs> from the valley and just walked and walked further than anyone in this civilization had ever walked. He walked through forests, past other rivers. He went across mountains and snow and sleet and hail and all that until finally he came to the biggest body of water that he'd ever seen. An ocean, you might say, <laughs> if that had been a card that I could have purchased. <laughs> and the fox, Foxy, Foxy, was con- <laughs> Foxy was confused. He had never seen so much water. But he knew that he had to search around if he was going to prevent his people from starving. And so then in the water, he saw not thousands and thousands of fish like he was used to in the river, but one large giant whale, a whale so big it took up the entire ocean and could be seen from miles in any direction. And so he led his people, the other foxes, and the non-thumbed foxes, <laughs> uh, and humans alike, followed him on this great journey to this ocean where they saw this whale, and they... they struck and killed this whale so that they could eat it to feed themselves, not realizing that this whale was in fact the god of this world, and when they killed it, all light and life was immediately extinguished, including Foxy, and the world reset back to its nascent state. That took a dark turn, man. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Plot twist. Yeah. I thought, you know, maybe the whale would carry them to safety or something, but this guy. (laughs) (laughs) See my thumbs. Maximum. <laughs> All right, so let's oh, uh, move our oh, offering right. bags around here. <laughs> oh my lord! So, uh, so that was that was all of our stories. Um, there is one last phase of the game, and uh, in this phase, it's the appreciation round, where um, we're going to use <coughs> the most important point of the game. As as we've all seen, uh, all of our scoring has been in secret, so we have not really yet shared uh, what we thought about each other's stories or anything like that. This is an opportunity to really share. So um, this one bonus point is going to go to the person for the, this is the coolest moment you thought of the the whole evening uh, you're going to award this. But before you do, you're also going to highlight one or two things that you heard that you really enjoyed. Um, so uh, it, again, it's always going to start with the, with the host to kind of set the tone. Um, let's see. Uh, you know what? While we... While we think about this, it might be helpful to put all our key cards down here so we can help kind of remind each other of what all these stories were. Make some room for you. Okay, so we just kind of think about that a little bit. Although to put them in order, I should probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. <coughs> so, uh, I thought there were a lot of really cool moments. So I'm not, I can't list them all. But um, what most impressed me about your story was I loved actually the very beginning of it uh, because the. The roles of the bear and the dog were not at all what I expected. And I thought it was really cool and refreshing that the, the, the bear was this kind of all-mother protective uh, being, and the dog, which is usually like the, 
the most loyal, you know, the, uh, you know, it's usually the hero of the story, ends up being the one who's like, you know, greedy and out for itself and everything else. And I just, I thought that was a really cool way to handle that, the, those characters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I respect about your story. <laughs> no, what I, um, at one point, you, you, you made a pivot. Yep. You made a pivot and um, you decided, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play this for the comedy. You did a great job of like, you know, I mean, the going in for the hands and coming out with this <laughs> foxy <laughs> monster was just hysterical. Um, and I, I, I thought it was, I thought it, your, li- your story took life when, when that happened. And I, I think that that was really cool. But my my big point, this is going to you, Aww. and I'll tell you why. Um, the imagery of a comet filled with dragons, and one of those dragons splitting off into the, the lonely darkness, and then forming the universe. I loved that <laughs> so much. That was awesome. Thanks. So, bonus point for you. Cool. And these are just this is just one point, but I think it's the most important point. So, so I'm going to piggyback off of that and just yeah, the imagery of the beginning of yours, Julie, was just so awesome there. And after your first uh, the in the beginning stage for chapter one, I'm just like, damn, I want to read more of this. Is this like a book that I can? <laughs> yeah, read? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to subscribe to your newsletter, right? <laughs> so, Julie, I'm tasking you with writing me a story that I could read for this because I really did think the imagery was just awesome in it. Yeah. Uh, Kurt, I really liked how you took the kind of demonic imagery. Like you had some very dark themes there. You yeah, had the demon fire, the skull, the ghost the the volcano poison and you kind of inverted that a little bit yeah. where you you took the demon and that was the creator of life and then you were the the, the ghost was you know, recalled uh re, uh, the poison ba- the the words from the book were the poison to his ears and yeah. i just thought that, that was like super creative that the way that you tied that together because i was thinking poison in the very literal sense of the word mm-hmm. uh so i thought that that was really neat but and have to give the point to that guy. <laughs> I gotta <laughs> use the guy. thumbs just because. <laughs> Thank you. The the foxy McThumbs was hilarious, <laughs> but just yeah, the 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 imagery of him going in and just he changes his hands and he's got thumbs and it's just like come on, you know, let's. I'm gonna grab you some fish because you can't do this. I'm just gonna grab. Yeah, I'm gonna grab you. those fish. <laughs> also, he's from Jersey now. Hey. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what I had in my head. I'm just like this fox. It's like you guys can't do it with yourself. You got. I'm gonna grab the fish. I got thumbs now. It's great. Next, <laughs> next week when we talk about this, yes, that's what we're gonna be talking yes. about. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and Matt, to your point about the like wanting to ha- hear more about stories, um, that's definitely something that is a great feature of the game. Like sometimes you'll go back and like use incorpor- incorporate characters from old stories the next time you play. And one thing we ha- we haven't mentioned yet on this particular stream, but we've talked about before on Twist, is that uh, we've uh, Kurt and I and some of our friends have worked up Common Core um, lesson plans. So this game could actually be used in a classroom setting to teach about mythology, and you could very easily do like a writing exercise where yeah. like, hey, now that you've got these characters in this world, you know, flesh it out a little bit more, you know, like turn into that kind of story. So that's, that's something really we're very cool. excited about having tied to it. Yeah. So I am going to echo what uh, has already been said several times about Julie's story. I thought that was just so cool at the beginning when the dragon curled up into a ball and the spines on the back were the mountains. Oh, yeah, and just the way cool. you incorporate that, it was like, beautiful. Um, and then, Matt, in your story, the slightly bigger bear. <laughs> slightly bigger bear was the best. I, that, <laughs> I as, love slightly bigger bear. <laughs> as a concrete moment, like that was just... Top notch. Um, I want to read more. I want to know all about the adventures of Slightly Bigger Bear. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to give my point, though, to Kurt. All right. Kurt, uh, the one moment that really stood out to me in your story that I just loved was when you were talking about fire, and fire became not this literal thing, but this idea of, like, knowledge. Yeah. You know, the, this spark inside of us, this, this thing that could uh, be used to burn out the evil, the idea of knowledge and education as this this driving force behind your civilization. I just thought that was really, really neat. Thank you. Okay. Um, so 
your story made me laugh so much <laughs> and the playfulness and the joy of that was was fantastic it's, and a wonderful contrast to, to <laughs> I'm so I sorry was you had to like so <laughs> very serious and Total and yours shifts. was so very yeah. playful and but I, but that was so nice and refreshing by not even just by comparison on its own yeah so that I very much enjoyed so that's echoing what what has already been said um and now I I, I have this image of of the fox and of course the very lazy human who was <laughs> like eh. not a, right, about right, it. right who seemed completely unfazed by a fox with hands in the first place which or didn't even care yeah. like a, no no gratitude whatsoever nope. um and the what has already been said the the um the knowledge being fire which is always inspiration how you know that type of concept uh i remember in my classroom when i was little something about uh, you know information you're not when your f- knowledge isn't um an urn to be filled but a fire to be fueled type of thing that that's that's exactly what i got and i liked that but i also really liked the cyclical nature of how you ended it as it began with with the demon bringing first bringing forth the, the skull. So I like that you brought it back. Yeah. I very much enjoy that. I am giving my point, however, Ooh, spoiler, look at this. to slightly larger bear <laughs> <laughs> because these were phenomenal stories, but they've had practice true. <laughs> and your true. story had some really cool like that so the, yes the dog and the bear the fact that you c- would end things on a cliffhanger so that, oh, that i was, wanted yeah, something that to be point. more yeah. every time yeah. that you add these great elements for somebody who hadn't played it at all and that was really cool to me that, yeah. that you were Thanks. doing some fun <laughs> stuff so <laughs> all right well that's it so that's the game and uh so if you want to you can look in your bag now and actually check out your score. Oh, of course I do. All right. I noticed that like the pile is right next to you. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no chance. Yeah. Kick, kick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, uh, I had 39. 37? 37. 37. Wow. Rock on. Yeah. Look at there you, you Foxy McFox Fox. Hey. <laughs> 37 plus one plus one. <laughs> and that's why you're a winner. <laughs> Also, one thing I just wanted to show really quickly that's kind of cool, I don't, I don't know if it'll be on the camera, but it's really interesting, like, the different um, spreads that you get with different stories. Like, I noticed Matt over there had a lot of, like, the middle points, a lot of threes, and then Julie had, um, like, a split, like, a lot of twos and then also a lot of fours. So, like, it's I interesting. Of Parent, threes, Parent yeah. that middle was divisive. not... You're divisive. Right. Yeah. But it, it can also yeah. be indicative of, like, having, like, uh, a really strong round, right? Like, if you, had, you had, like, one chunk that was just blowing everybody away, right? And then... Yeah. Whereas Matt's story maybe had like this consistency throughout the entire thing, an even keel tone. And you can kind of see that reflected in the scoring, which is cool. Yeah. Now, um, so obviously, you know, what's nice about this game is that um, now we didn't see even half of the, the keywords. But even if we had gone through the entire deck, how people interpret and use these concepts at the various levels of the, 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 the game, there's infinite... Re- yeah. reuse of, of the game. It's not going to get tired. You know, Absolutely. Like the way you're using a lot of your words metaphorically versus literally, exactly. that opens up many, many possibilities for how you can weave these tales yeah. together. Interestingly, uh, when, when, when you first designed the game, um, you had a set of cards for each of these chapters. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they were keyed to like things that you might think traditionally of being the beginning and the end. So like Comet and Blizzard were like the end cards, right? Right, we had like end of days ones like Famine and Pestilence and the Comet and the Volcano. And then at the beginning it was, you know, things like clay and, you know, water yeah. and fire. Uh, Dawn of Civilization like Anvil and ha- like, you know, more like mm-hmm. utilitarian type yeah. things. And um, it was interesting because it, it 
totally worked, but it was unnecessarily constraining because as we saw once Kurt made that change, like stories find a way to work themselves out no matter when you're getting the thing and it's really cool sometimes to have an access to the comet in the first round because you can turn it into a ball of dragons and why wouldn't you that's great you know like yeah, it yeah really, that, it really that was an up. end of days kind of a thing I think, right? originally yeah yeah um so technically it was both correct well <laughs> that's done. true that's true right there <laughs> <laughs> um so so i love the replayability of it um and then we also pushed to do one other thing. The, the game, as, as you guys originally presented, was really just about creation myths. Um, but obviously, our oral tradition has a lot of different stories that we tell. So uh, if you flip your card over, and I'm going to flip it over on the camera here. Ooh. Uh, we also have... There's a lot of green on there. Yeah. We also have the legend. Um, now, the legend, uh, unlike the myth where the myth was like four compartmental stories about, you know, our mm -hmm. universe, this is the legend of one thing. So uh, the, the story structure is also different. So um, it's going to be really hard to see on the, on the green camera here. Yeah. But um, the, uh, the first card in, uh, in the series is the consistent, this is the legend of. So when you first draft your three cards, you're going to choose one of them. Can you find it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is the legend of Foxy McFunks. Yes. You right. Could, yeah. Uh, you can so just flip it right over and keep right? going. Yeah. And so, so often in mythology, you know, it, they're trying to explain natural phenomena. So, you know, why do we have spring? How did the Arctic fox lose its color? You know, all these kind of things are like, you know, stories that that. Well, come. The poor quatel, which is yeah. Th that's exactly yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of that. So uh, this is the opportunity to tell those tales as well. So at, out of the three cards that you draft at the beginning, one you're going to choose as the in, the legend of the thing that we're going to tell all the way through, and then it's a three-part story. So once there was a something with a problem, because we set up kind of like you know the, the tension at the front, and then things get worse until they have a big idea. And then finally, in the end, here's what happens. And ever since that day, this is why we have what we have. Um, so uh, it gives you a whole new way to play the game. Um, and again, it, now it, it adds infinitely more ways to go. It also has, uh, you, you talked about uh, the educational mm -hmm. aspects uh, of the game. Um, what I love about the, the legend piece is that you can almost do like comparative studies. So if we all tell the legend of a one thing, which is one of the optional rules in the game, mm -hmm. How did the legend of the sun change from culture to culture? We can we can have as you know a whole bunch of stories about the legend of the sun. Yep. So um, so it's it's just it's just kind of neat. Um, uh, I think there's a, there's a lot of fun in just the creation and the fun of it. Um, there is. Um, I mean, as we see, some, sometimes you, you take it really serious. I, I've had people who who take um, creation myth and they it's. They do pure science. There's no like spirituality in it. They did pure science, and then someone does classic Greek, and someone goes for like a, a body comedy, and there's like right. there's all kinds of different things that happen. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. There's just the, the the tool set is pretty straightforward, and what comes out of it is as unique as you and me. Very cool. Yeah. So that was before there were stars, uh, Kurt. Alex, anything else that you would like to point out about this game before we get into our first impression session? Well, I think we'll just uh, say that the game launches uh, this August. We will have um, essentially pre-release copies at Gen Con, um, where we've parceled out a part and it, it just got it here sooner. So, And then it'll be in full retail um, about two to three weeks after that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Take a look for it. Uh, it's we, we we try to make it look like it was appropriate for your wine table and having people over just to like kind of do a cool thing at night. But it's also great for families and kids and just like people who love role playing and people who are like completely new to storytelling. I think there's a there's a really Class broad rooms. audience. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Kurt, Alex, thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, thank we you. We really do appreciate it. And thank all of you for watching at home. We're going to do yeah. a soft sign-off right now, but stay tuned for our first impression <laughs> session where we talk about our favorite aspects of the game, any constructive criticisms we have, and then the most important question of the evening of would we play it again. But for now, this is Twist Gaming signing off. I'm Matt. I'm Julie. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>